This video is for entertainment purposes only and is not financial advice. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Josh and in today's video, I'll be providing you with a Shezzy public portfolio update for the month of April 21. So this month was actually quite a big month for the portfolio. I've made a lot of changes to the portfolio. In particular, I sold down all of the ETF positions. So I explain later on why I did that. And I'll also talk about some of the news or developments on the top holdings of this portfolio and the plans that I have for it now that I've sold down the ETF. So if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit like and subscribe, but with no time wasted, let's get right into the video. So here is the portfolio as of the 4th of May 2021. So over here we have the portfolio value of $16,822.65. And that represents a return of 20.75% or $2,909. And uh, basically the portfolio has been doing quite well ever since uh, the Rony Rona. So this year the numbers look really good. So if you go one year back, uh, I was negative and now we are in the green. So pretty big green number over there, 2,900. And here are all my positions. So I have Agosi Property, Auckland International Airport, Heartland Group Holdings, Infratil, Main Freight, NZX, and Oceania Healthcare. So none of the individual companies' uh, positions are new. These are all positions that I had in the previous month. But you might have noticed I've only got one ETF position, and that is the SmartShares NZ Top 50 Fund with only a dollar. So I basically left this March shares NZ Top 50 fund in here just for fun to see where the ETF is going. So I bought this position uh, when I started this account back in July 2019. And uh, so far it's returned 20%. So the index hasn't actually done all too much in the past two years or so, but that's kind of what you'd expect from the ETF, uh, long-term returns of 6 to 8%. And uh, it's not really a good benchmark for this portfolio because when I add money into this portfolio, the returns will actually go down because the returns are calculated based on how much money you have in this account. So over time, as I add money into this account, the returns will drop. So it's not really a good benchmark, but I'm just leaving this uh, $1 in here just to see where it goes into the future. All right, so now let me take you to the Excel spreadsheet to show you how my positions have moved compared to the month of March. So over here is the Excel spreadsheet, and this is as at the 30th of April, 2021. So I took the numbers down from Sharesies on the weekend, so I made sure that this is at least representative of the April numbers. And you can see the portfolio value is slightly different. So this is $16,604, representing a return of 19.79%. The top holdings, Oceania Healthcare had increased by 1.3%, and that is on the back of the shareholder purchase plan that they uh, recently had to raise money to buy a new village on Hobsonville as well as a piece of land. So I participated in that uh, SPP and I did manage to buy more shares at $1.28, which is the price those shares were issued at. And I also bought more uh, with the institutional plan at $1.30. So currently, as at the uh, 30th of April, at least, the share price was $1.35. Since then, it's only gone up. So I actually did visit the Meadowbank Oceania Healthcare Village last month, and uh, it was a really nice site. I went to the independent living area, felt like a hotel, like a five-star hotel. And uh, the village manager was really professional, showed me the uh, independent living unit. And those units go for roughly eight to $900,000. You also have the penthouse units, uh, which were more high end, so closer to 1.5 million and over. And the village itself in Meadowbank is actually quite a small village compared to some of the bigger ones. Meadowbank had only 200, less than 200 people living there, but uh, some of the larger ones, especially Ryman, for example, have over 700 people living in it. So it's actually like a proper village, but Oceania Healthcare is a more boutique resort, if you, if you know what I mean. So definitely do visit some of the sites if you are interested. Always worthwhile just checking out what you're investing in because I find that is a good way to get uh, some insights, understand what's happening on the ground floor and uh, you'll be able to pick up trends earlier on as well. So that is my visit for Oceania Healthcare. That is a position that I currently have, the largest position in the portfolio. 
and uh, it's definitely one that I wouldn't mind increasing my allocation towards. All right, the second position is Heartland Group Holdings, currently sitting at 11.8%. So this company operates in the banking industry and they do a lot of reverse mortgages in Australia. Now, speaking of Australian banks, Westpac did report their first half results yesterday. And I usually like to take a look at what other banks are doing, especially in Australia, where Heartland has quite a big presence in terms of its reverse mortgage operations. It just gives me a good expectation on what I could expect for Heartland Group's results going forward. So over here I have an article about Westpac results and it says that Westpac has rebounded from their slump in 2020 by posting strong results for the first half of 2021. Shares jumped by 4% as a result of the announcement this morning. What's very interesting to note is that their Australian mortgage book increased 2.6 billion over the past six months with good growth in the owner-occupier loans, partly offset by lower investor lending. Owner-occupier loans increased 3% with first home buyers making up 13% of new loans. So as you can see over here, it does look like the activity and at least in mortgage lending is going quite strong. So that bodes well for uh, Heartland Group's reverse mortgage operations. Over here as well, we do see that Westpac's uh, provisions are starting to wind down. So basically they provision a lot of money for bad debts, thinking that the economy was gonna fall over, but uh, things actually recovered much quicker than they expected or turned out not to be so bad. So over here we can see the uh, impairment expense winding down. So it says here that after taking impairment charges of 2.2 billion in March half last year and 940 million in the September half, Westpac released some of its collective provision and booked an impairment benefit of $372 million. So that looks good for Westpac and also does give me a good indicator of the economic activity in Australia and New Zealand for Heartland Group's operations as well. And if we look at the assumptions on Heartland Group's holdings uh, guidance, the assumptions was that provided repayment activity and impairment asset expense forecasts are met and economic conditions continue to improve, Heartland expects net profit after tax for FY21 to be at the upper end of the guidance range of 83 to 85 million. So seeing how Westpac has recently done, we could expect Heartland's profit to be closer to 85 or maybe even above 85 million dollars. So that bodes well for Heartland Group and uh, I'm very comfortable with my position of Heartland Bank being roughly 11.8% of the portfolio. So the next position is Infratil. Now Infratil makes up 7.6% of the portfolio and in terms of news, uh, this month was a good month for Infratil. So basically they received an increased bid for the Tilt Renewables shares that they have. So the bid that they've received from Powering Australian Renewables or Power was uh, $7.80 initially and that's increased to $8.10 per share. So this values their stake at roughly $2 billion. So Tilt Renewables is part of the Infratil portfolio and Infratil actually received the Tilt Renewables shares when Trustpower decided to spin Tilt Renewables off as a separate company. And they also bought a bunch of shares two and a half years ago roughly at $2.30 from the market. And so just two and a half years later, they're selling the shares at $8.10. I think that is fantastic management from the Morrison and Co team which is the managers for Infratil. And uh, Infratil is definitely a position that I'm very comfortable with having a much larger stake in this portfolio. So I'm happy to keep my allocation of roughly 7.6% at the moment, but I am happy to add more shares in there as I see management execute really well with these deals going forward. And towards the end of April, Infratil did announce that it has executed a conditional agreement to acquire between 50.1% and 60% of Pacific Radiology Group Limited, a comprehensive diagnostic imaging business in New Zealand from existing doctor shareholders for a consideration up to 350 million. So once they do sell their stake in Tilt Renewables, they'll have cash to deploy into other businesses as well. So in terms of the other stocks that I have in the portfolio, there hasn't been any news out for these companies. So over here we do have NZX at 8.2%, Auckland International Airport 6.9%, same with Agosi Property and Main Freight at 6.7%. Now as you can see over here, I did sell down on most of my ETF positions. We have the Emerging Markets Fund fully sold out 
US 500 fund fully sold out, Aussie mid cap as well, and the ASX 200. So that has freed up roughly 36.2% of the portfolio, which is now sitting in cash or roughly $6,000 ready to be redeployed. So I have talked about some of the companies that I own in this portfolio. So over the next month, I will um, add more money into some of these positions and also build new positions up. I've been doing some research on Australian equities as well. Now that Sharesies has started offering the Australian stocks on their platform. So I'm currently doing more research on new stocks and I will be building out positions hopefully by um, the end of this month or maybe next month. Um, but I would also like to keep some cash in the portfolio now. Uh, now that the portfolio is getting quite a decent size and my monthly or weekly additions to the portfolio doesn't actually make up much as a percentage of the current portfolio. So I think it's wise to hold some cash. Now, the reason why I did sell down the ETF was mainly because of the changes made to the Sharesies fee structure. So over here, I have an article on Sharesies update to their pricing. And there's two big changes that you need to know. First of all, they've removed the subscription fee on Sharesies account. So previously they were charging $3 monthly or $30 annually. Now they're dropping it fully. So if you've paid for an annual plan, you will get a refund. But the second change, which is not so good, I think, is that they're introducing transaction fees on New Zealand exchange traded funds. So if you own any ETFs, buying and selling, you will have to pay the normal transaction fees, which are 0.5% for orders up to $3,000 and 0.1% for any amount above $3,000. This is um, not so good if you own ETFs, and that is also the reason why I've sold down. Now, I've done some calculations on what I think about the fees. So if you're deciding on what to do, maybe this will help you out. So with the first change on the Sharesies accounts, we do get $30 better off because we don't have to pay that annual fee but they do introduce the transaction fees on ETFs. So I've calculated here for small investors, investors who invest less than $3,000 each time, uh, you will be worse off if you invest more than $6,000 per year, $500 per month, or $115 per week. So for the public account, I'm actually investing less than $500 per month, roughly. So I'm actually uh, slightly better off if I do decide to buy ETFs. But the thing is, I have decided to just sell down all my shares anyway, in ETFs at least, in order to free up the funds because one day this account will get big enough where it will start to hurt. And I want to sell now while I still can not paying any selling fees because if you sell, you will also have to pay that 0.5%. So I've decided to sell all my smart shares ETFs and uh, I will be redeploying that in the coming month. Now, if you're deciding whether or not to uh, continue with sharesies, um, a few things that you need to consider, if you're buying individual stocks, then it makes sense to continue with sharesies because sharesies is the cheapest provider, at least for New Zealand stocks at the moment. Um, but if you're just purely buying ETFs, then a platform like Invest Now would actually be a better alternative because Invest Now doesn't have any transaction fees when you're buying uh, any ETFs. So that's what I think about the updated pricing. It's not ideal. So when I did create this portfolio in July 2019, I did add in ETFs in there so that it would be easy if you're a beginner because you know ETFs are generally quite diversified and uh, you do get the benefits of uh, diversification for a very low fee. So now with the increased fee, I don't personally get any benefits from investing in ETFs because personally, I actually don't invest in any ETFs or the positions that I have uh, in individual stocks. So um, this isn't really a uh, change in strategy for my personal investing. It is a change in the strategy for the public portfolio. So I'll try to keep this portfolio as a dividend portfolio uh, where I do invest in dividend stocks, but going forward, I uh, wouldn't hesitate to add any stocks that don't necessarily pay any dividends, but are potentially good value. Um, I would definitely not hesitate to add those stocks in this portfolio. So that is the changes to this portfolio. Hopefully um, it doesn't turn you off, but if you do own ETFs, definitely check out InvestNow because they don't charge any fees, um, but Shazies is still great for individual stocks. So that's all for today's video. If you have any ASX stock suggestions you want me to take a look at, be sure to leave comments down below so that I can do more research into uh, the ASX market because I'm unfamiliar with the ASX, but I'm doing more research this month uh, and going forward as well to add stocks potentially into this portfolio. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. But until next time, guys, take care.